Hi Penny, hi Paige. So we're talking vibrato today. And before I get into like the mechanics of how you do vibrato, I wanted to explain why we do vibrato. <laughs> so vibrato at its core is our attempt as violinists to sound like vocalists. So vocalists will use vibrato to add warmth and inflection and emotion to their music and we'll do the same things and where a vocalist does that internally here we're actually going to do that with our wrists and our elbows and our forearms and hands and stuff like that um, so I favor wrist vibrato which is here and that is where I generally uh, treat my wrist as a fixed point and my hand moves backward and forward from it. There's other types though. Some people do arm vibrato and some people do finger vibrato, which is really uncomfortable and I don't like it. <laughs> and it also makes for like a really narrow, tight sound. Um, so I think it's great to start with either arm vibrato or wrist vibrato. So lots of words. Let me show you what it looks like. <clears throat> So that's Margaret's Waltz. And um, what, I, what I did is I don't use vibrato on every single note, just on kind of longer ones when I want to, um, I don't want it to just be like, <laughs> you know, that can sound kind of boring after a while. So you want it to be, and you put a little vibrato in there. Okay, so how am I doing it? Guys, this stuff, it's either, it's either gonna take like six minutes or six months to learn it. Um, I've, had, I've had students do it in both. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's generally easiest to start trying to do vibrato on a second finger. It doesn't matter what string, but try your second finger and your third finger. One of those is gonna be the easiest one for you to make this motion on. Now I'm gonna show you arm vibrato first. And that is where we um, make the angle of our elbows smaller and then larger. And that's how we get the sound. But what I'm doing is I'm planting my second finger. I'll do it on the A string for now. I'm planting my second finger and then I am moving my elbow. Not much, but I'm moving my elbow toward and away from my body. And Here's what it looks like for my fingertip. I'm keeping my fingertip placed on the string, but you're gonna notice I'm kind of scrunching up on it, and then I'm coming away from it a little bit. Here's what it looks like from this side. What you notice about that is my wrist is staying perfectly straight, my knuckle's still staying, staying in its good spot, but I'm feeling my bicep and some other muscles in my, big muscles in my arm. It's a big muscle movement. It's not like a little finger, finger thing. <laughs> You're gonna feel your whole arm moving backwards and forwards. Try it again. And you might 
uh, as you're learning to do this movement, you might just try it without the bow to try to just get the feeling of it. So that's a great way to start incorporating vibrato is just to use an arm vibrato because, because it is easier to control bigger muscles. That's a great way to start. I also encourage you to learn uh, wrist vibrato. Uh, and wrist vibrato is a little bit more tricky because it's smaller muscles and it's a weird movement. It's a really weird movement. Um, but here's how we do wrist vibrato. And it's almost like I'm waving at myself, um, but with, you know, still keeping my fingertip in on the same spot. Um, <clears throat> it's a lot more tricky to describe what's happening though. The best thing you can do is watch a lot of vibrato and that really helps to kind of understand what's happening and you'll learn it through osmosis. You'll just pick it up, you know. But if I want to get really into the nitty gritty and tell you what I'm, what I'm doing, um, I, like I said earlier, I'm treating my wrist as a fixed point. So no longer am I moving this angle in my elbow back and forth. That I want to stay exactly the same. Now I am waving at myself very small, <laughs> small wave, and trying to keep this still. I'm not doing this to get the vibrato. That That's just kind of like, you know like when you're swimming and your feet are above the water and you're kicking and splashing? It's like that. It's making a lot of motion, but it's not getting you anywhere. So you want to keep your forearm in the same position. And then just kind of like scrunch up on that angle of your fingers and then release. And scrunch up on the angle of your fingers and release. One way to practice that might be to go up here, put your, put this part of your, the cradle of your thumb against the, the body of your violin and kind of tap. That gets the right idea because your angle of your elbow staying the same and you get to, to feel what it's like to do this with your wrist. So tap on your strings like this. And then come back to your C sharp, your second finger on the A string, and try, try that tapping motion, but here with your finger down. Or maybe you just try the tapping here. Tapping, air quotes. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. That's ch challenging to do without the body of the violin stopping your hand. but that's a good approximation of what the feeling is like. And then plant your two fingers or three if you like your third finger better and try just kind of rolling around on the tip of your finger like they're little ball bearings. Now, this is easy for me because I have um, my nail bed ends far before my fingertip. I have a wide fingertip and um, some folks have nail beds <clears throat> that continue all the way to the very tip of their fingers and it just makes it a little bit more challenge a lot more challenging to get this sort of vibrato because this demands you know sort of being on the top of your fingertip but some people's nail gets in the way so you just got to kind of work with with uh what you got <laughs> all right so try out that uh wrist vibrato and if that's just not working for you back up to the arm vibrato uh, but eventually I want you carrying through that motion to your wrist. All right, see what you can do with it. Good luck.